All right, so something new for the monkey, and for once not having to do with the big bore kit or breaking an engine in. This is the Takagawa instrument cluster for the monkey that replaces the stock happy smiley blinky face cluster, which I've always disliked. The stock cluster isn't very reflective, so in direct sunlight, when the sun's directly overhead, it's almost impossible to see. Um, it doesn't show much information. Uh, I've put a separate tachometer on because there's no tack on it, but this product is supposed to solve all of those problems for me. So here it is. It comes in the same Takagawa box that I have too many of here in the garage. comes with a bunch of wires and a housing. But here it is, it looks pretty cool. It's got some uh, plastic covering on it. But it's got a tachometer on the outside up to 12,000 RPM. And then it's got a little LCD readout that's gonna show all kinds of cool stuff. So let's get this on the bike. All right, it came with a 15 page instruction manual. Each page was neatly folded so that it fit in that small square box. So I tried my best to unfold them and staple them together, uh, but a pretty, detailed set of instructions uh, unfortunately all in Japanese but I'm assuming I'll be able to figure out so my biggest concern is making sure that it can work in the units that I'm familiar with all right so this is a good sign because it looks like it'll allow me to do it in either Celsius or Fahrenheit Fahrenheit being what I want but my biggest concern is to make sure that I can run it in miles per hour all right, so I actually found the exact same instructions on the Takagawa website, but in English, which I'll link in the description below. The good news, though, being that I found the instructions here saying that you can select between kilometers per hour and miles per hour, which is what I want to make sure that I could do. So, uh, with that figured out, now it's time to put it on the bike. Since you need to get under the speedometer here to get to these bolts, you also need to take off the headlight bucket. So it's removing these two uh, Allen bolts from the side pieces here will get the bucket out and then you can get access to get to the bolts to remove this. All right, so there's just a plug that pulls this whole thing off now. All right, so I've got the mounting bracket onto the speedometer. There's these rubber grommets that they go in between the bracket and the speedometer, then an eight millimeter washer, and then the eight millimeter nut. I also added a little bit of Loctite on this, uh, just so, since my bike rattles quite a bit, that it doesn't rattle those nuts off. And then finally, I have the outer housing on. It just goes on with that three millimeter Allen key in the bottom that secures it around the entire speedometer. So on the other side here, it has one plug for the original harness, which mates up to this one back here. And then it also has two accessory harnesses and a single pin for the RPM read. The kit comes with a pass-through that goes to the negative uh, terminal on the coil and has the correct plug that's gonna run up to the headlight bucket. Again, I've already made my own, but this comes with one. And I figured out what the two accessories are. So this one is the button to control the settings. So it's just the push button to go through the selections. It also comes with a piece of tape so you can conveniently mount it somewhere on the bike. And this other one is just a ambient temperature sensor. You can apparently buy a kit that'll route to your actual engine temp sensor.
All right, so this in short order has become one of my favorite mods that I've done to my 2019 Honda Monkey. So while I do miss the cute blinky eyes winking at me when the bike starts up, this is a much more functional and practical instrument cluster. So it's got the sweeping tack. The main thing that you're looking at at all times is where you are in the RPM band. Down here in the corner, it has your miles per hour. The speedometer, you can switch between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. The temperature can be switched between Fahrenheit and Celsius and the clock. And it's amazing to finally have a clock on this bike can be switched between 12 hours and 24 hour clocks. Uh, along the left side here are all of the different indicators. So your neutral light indicator, high beam indicator, fuel warning light, ABS light. And since I don't have ABS, I can turn that function off altogether and check engine light down here at the bottom. So then here within the LCD screen, you've got uh, your current speed, and then you can cycle through this next thing where it shows first your odometer. Down here, it shows your gear selection. This comes with a built-in gear selector and it's there's a learning process where you set it up, it tells you to go, and then it tells you to stay in each gear for a certain amount of time. And at the end, it's calibrated to understand at different speeds what that RPM is and how that translates to a particular gear. So it works really well. Uh, when you stop, it doesn't actually know which gear you're in. But otherwise, when you're traveling and you're in any particular gear, it knows if you're in gears one, two, three, or four. And then it always knows you're in neutral because there's a neutral indicator light coming off of the engine. And then down here at the bottom right, it has your fuel gauge level. So uh, there's a little button and it's slightly off camera. I showed it during the install. I have just under my handlebar that you can press once to cycle through the features. This is just the trip A feature, trip B. This shows again, amazingly the time. So this has a temperature sensor, which is really cool. By default, it's just a stick temperature sensor that currently is only showing me the ambient air temperature, but there's a kit that Takagawa sells to connect it to the drain plug to get oil temperature. And I've actually since ordered that so that I can monitor oil temps off of, off of this screen and not having to use a secondary screen. The even cooler feature of this, and I'll show as I go through the option selections, but you can select this bright light up here to both be uh, a maximum speed indicator, which doesn't make any sense. I just sent mine to 100. It can also be a shift light. I have my RPM shift light set to 9200 RPM, I believe. And also maximum engine temperature sensor, which is the most important thing to me as I'm monitoring this big bore kit and I have certain temperatures that I don't want to go over. So I'm typically constantly looking at the AFR to make sure that I'm not running too lean, but I'm doing that to make sure that I'm not running too hot. And by having this maximum engine temperature sensor, once I get that additional part from Takagawa to actually be looking at the, the temp of the oil, It'll be great because I won't have to pay quite as much attention. If I see the indicator light pop on, I'll know I need to look through what the actual temp is and, and then potentially turn off the bike or take some other action. But out of the box, it just shows ambient temperature. So cycling through, battery voltage. This shows the maximum that I've hit in different things. Uh, so it shows that my max speed has been 50 miles an hour. The max temperature that it's currently showing at 192 degrees, that was actually because I was trying to see if I couldn't integrate my COSO sensor uh, with this one. That's why it spiked up to that. Uh, I'm wondering actually if I can reset that. I assume if I just hold the button down, it resets them. Awesome. I wanted to show some of the adjustments you can make. So if you hold down the button off of the odometer, it goes into this adjust mode. You can change the clock time and also uh, whether it's 12 hour or 24 hour clock. This is where you can change between Fahrenheit and Celsius and miles per hour and kilometers per hour. This is where you can change the illumination. So I'll select this. And it stands, starts off as white, but I can go red. And actually red looks pretty cool with the bike. Yellow, also yellowish, green, blue, indigo, purple, and back to white. And so after that, you can also select the intensity. One being the dimmest, three, four, and five being the brightest. So I'll leave it at the top for now. So this tire function is great. I had an aftermarket speedo healer from 12 o'clock labs that I was using. Well, this thing has it integrated and you can change the percentage of the tire size to accommodate for different speeds. So using the GPS on my phone, I just made adjustments until I got it to, in this case, it was 106% matched up well with my 16 tooth front sprocket and stock tires to give me an accurate reading on the speedometer uh, as it matched against the GPS. Uh, this is the gear selection that I was speaking about earlier. Uh, this is the warning light. I'll go through this. So for speed, actually for some reason it's set at 89 miles an hour because I'm not really looking to be warned about any particular speed. Uh, RPM, I guess I currently have it to 9100. Here I'll change that to 9200 for 
demonstration purposes. And then engine temp, uh, currently set to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fine because it's not connected to the engine. So I think once I actually have the engine temp sensor on, I'll set it to about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is the warning for the battery voltage setting. I have it set, and I think it was by default set to 11.5 volts that it'll let me know if the voltage drops below that. I have the ABS setting set to off because I don't have ABS. And since this is replacing a speedometer that you likely already had miles on the bike, you can actually set how many miles you want this to start off with. So thanks everybody for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos.